Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Brian's Farm. So I apologize, first of all, because the sun is very bright. I can't even barely open my eyes. But I haven't been making videos the past couple days, and that is just because I've actually been pretty sick, and I just wasn't really feeling like getting out of the house much. So here I am, and I feel much, much better. That's why I'm heading down to the farm now for like the first time in, well, like I said, probably around four or five days. I was actually sick, but not too bad. Started feeling better, and then I got sick again, and hopefully now I'm finished, and well, I'm recovering. So, not fully out of it yet, but I feel good enough to where I can at least get out and do a little bit around the farm. Not that I'm gonna go crazy, but I think it's at least good to get some fresh air. And so, it's pretty cold, it's around 40 degrees, but it's a beautiful day. Just had about three inches of rain. You can see how it's puddling up here. And it's starting to soak in now, but it was like a river going down through here. It was really bad. And so there's obviously not much going on here on the farm this time of year. Greenhouses obviously aren't started yet. And uh, we're obviously down in the field, so not, not too much to do. You see in my previous videos how we got the shade cloth off. Here's all of our stakes out of the high tunnel. Frank stack very nice and neat. And then in here, it's just bare dirt that we planted rye into and then scratch it in with the rakes. And what we're gonna do is if it gets too dry, we're gonna turn on these drip lines and move them throughout the high tunnel back and forth. Hopefully get that watered in and starting to grow. One thing I didn't tell you about that's actually the biggest job that's going on in the farm right now is we're getting a generator put in for the farm. We've needed one for years. Finally now are getting to it and it'll power everything besides our home that's all the way at the top by the main road. And so now if we lose power, we have water for our greenhouses and we can power our cooler and all the very important things that we basically need to have. Days, we swimming. You swimming, come on. So right down here is the generator. Down around the corner there is the tank. This is a 26KW Generac. Now, I guess the operator's not us. I don't know where. Put their forks through here and damage this bottom part. I guess it's not that big of a deal. There is this plate that goes around, so we're not gonna worry about it, but that's just kind of sad for a brand new unit. Now we have a little bit of damage. In here is what it looks like. Looks very fancy way more than I know about. And so the whole gas line's dug, everything's ready to go, but now everything's just gotta get hooked up. This building went down, I don't know, about 12, 15 years ago. And so then we had to get this all redone. And so this is where all the power is for the entire farm. They're gonna put a new box in there cause that's just a spare box. And then other boxes in here. Again, I'm not, I don't know anything about electrical, so I can't say stuff in specifics, but I'll be sure to show you when it's done and complete. Back in this shed, we also have a Modine heater that we haven't been able to use for a while. And that's because we've had a very old tank that the gas companies wouldn't fill because it wasn't technically safe. And so we just had them bring another one of those for that now because, well, that just makes life easier for us. When they bring the big truck, they can fill that up without having any issues. Here is the new tank. Right over here is the old tank. And I guess, yes, you can see how it is kind of in rough shape, but they even told us they'd probably buy this off of us and then they'll recondition that and they'll resell that again then. So now we've got to get this leveled up for this new tank to go in here.
So we're not 100% sure how they fill it, but this beam might be too close to that. So we'll see. But we're gonna put it together for now and wait to hear from them guys. That looks so good. Okay. One job we've been wanting to do around the farm for a while now since we've been getting caught up on all our very important jobs was cleaning out all of our gutters and downspouts because over the past few months we've really noticed how in a hard rainstorm we're having just overflowing and it's dumping out and it's just not good for the foundations or anything like that. And so we're gonna start with this gutter right here on the main shed that we've been working on or around the past couple days. And so you can see this one right here, it is totally disconnected from the gutter. The downspout is disconnected from the gutter. And so we're gonna try and get that fastened back up there. It even looks like the brackets are tilting, are came loose, so now the gutter's tilting down. So we're gonna try and get that all fixed up and get this shed working properly again. So you can see here how all the brackets are off the gutter. So we're going through here now and trying to fasten them back up and sturdy it up again. Basie, what did you get into? Set. Look at you. Maybe you should go for another swim in the pond. You want to play? Come on. I always keep our toy up under here. She gets very excited when this comes out. <gasps> Look at Are you ready? See, I missed that. Get it, Dace. Maybe that'll clean her off a little bit. <clears throat> Come on, Dace. So to finish off the day, I'm out here at the strawberry field again. At the fencer. We have power going around this whole top strip. But like I was saying before, I couldn't get a jumper wire down to the lower one. It was screwing everything up. So now my buddy came, who's an actual electrician. We grabbed an actual copper wire and he's wiring that up right now. And then I'm gonna flip it back on again. And we'll see if we can get the whole thing up and running. <laughs> yeah, don't get too close to me. <laughs> here at the market mom has now finished up making all of her Christmas decorations she's got still like three or four wreaths three or four logs oh actually there's about five wreaths back there and three more out here and then there's four logs left and then once they're gone that's it for the season we never like to run out but we are within like five days or something like that of Christmas and there's just no point now of making more and then letting them go to waste because 
after Christmas, nobody wants anything like that. So now probably as soon as Christmas is over, my next job will be coming in here, getting all these cleaned up, swept out. Maybe we'll even have Frank come back and we'll get this whole greenhouse clean. That way it's ready for greenhouse season. We also then need to clean up our Christmas trees. We actually ended up getting just about the perfect amount because like there's nothing left that you can use on that. There's almost nothing left on that one. These two have been finished for a while and it looks like there might be a little bit extra on this guy, but not too much because you can see how she's been nipping off in here exactly what she needs. Even though it does look pretty green, that doesn't mean there's a lot on there she can use because like this, maybe she can use like that, but that would be about it. Even so though, if there is anything good left on these, it's gonna go to my cousin's goats. If you don't know much about goats, which I don't actually know that much either, but one thing I do know is they love Christmas trees. They will eat these things completely bare. They'll eat all the bark off, all the needles. They won't actually eat the wood itself with really everything besides that. So it's really cool to see. So the guys were here and left now today. Here's the panel boxes they put in. I'm actually not gonna touch anything because, well, I don't wanna screw anything up. But obviously here's the Generac box and here's another Generac box. And I'm not sure what they were doing in this panel box, but I'm sure something had to be done there. We got the regulator on, the gas line is now hooked up. And I think now Conduit has to be run from here inside of the shed. But again, I'm not 100% positive there. So I'm hoping with one more day, this thing should be fully finished up. So my buddy was here. From what he was gathering, from all the information I was telling him and testing the fence himself, he wants me to try scratching the paint off of the fences that we hook on and off. He thinks maybe there isn't a very good connection there and that could be where I'm losing my amps, voltage, joules, whatever exactly it is. He said if that doesn't work, he said he thinks that maybe the fencer is too small for that big of a field. Now, the fencer says it's for a 30 mile run. I don't know how true that is. Are you ready to get the kiddies? Are you ready? And the kiddies are always right there. She loves to just run in there. I don't really know why, <laughs> but uh, the cats at this point aren't even really scared of her no more. As soon as we get past the holidays here, I'm gonna hopefully get to start cleaning all this metal up. We have a bunch of scrap metal here and up by the blue shed, I wanna get taken to the scrap yard. Every year we obviously have things that go bad or we clean stuff up, don't have time to take it to the scrap yard. And then it's always around this time of year that we have the time to get rid of it. That way we can again prepare for the upcoming season. That's what I'm gonna call it a wrap for this video. As always, thank you guys for watching and always remember it ain't much, but it's honest work.